knew it. To what extent does the past shape our future? A millennia I spent in cryosleep. Why was I placed there? What is my destiny? To find my purpose? I must uncover my past. Hot on the heels of Stellaris First Contact, Paradox have just announced the next DLC for Stellaris. Ladies and gentlemen, the next DLC for Stellaris will be Galactic Paragons. This is also coming out frighteningly quickly with a release date of Tuesday, May 9th, which at present is in just two weeks time. This DLC will be bringing us a brand new origin, no less than eight new civics, two new tradition trees, and then a whole host of other things which will tie into the main focus of this DLC. What is the main focus of the Galactic Paragons DLC? Well that, ladies and gentlemen, is leaders. In this video, I have collated everything we know so far about the new Galactic Paragons DLC. A special thanks to the community team at Stellaris for providing me with the dev diary and other information early so I can bring this video to you at the same time as the DLC is announced. But without any further ado, let's dive in and find out what Galactic Paragons is all about. Over the past year, the developers for Stellaris have been working on several things in parallel. While PDS Green, based in Stockholm, was building the first Contact Story Pack, their colleagues at PDS Arctic in Umeå were working on a major project as well. And they are very pleased to announce that Galactic Paragons, an expansion focusing on leaders and their impact within your empire, will be released alongside Stellaris' 7th anniversary on May 9th. This developer diary going through the new features will be helmed by Petter Nalo, who directed the development of Galactic Paragons. He works at PDS Arctic and he is here to explain their vision and provide, as I mentioned, a list of features. First, we have the vision of Galactic Paragons. Amidst the great empires of the galaxy, there are luminaries who would rise above the masses. They take on many forms. Cunning rulers, ruthless warlords, devout prophets, bold explorers, and visionary scientists. These leaders leave indelible imprints on their empires, etching their names into the annals of history and the collective consciousness of the people they ruled. The Galactic Paragons expansion focuses on these extraordinary individuals seeking to capture the essence of their epochal reigns. Leaders, as you might imagine, have had a rework. We have a new level up system which will allow us to shape our leaders in an entirely new way. We will be able to pick traits, select between veteran classes, and find them positions where they may excel. They are also tied to the galaxy in a brand new way with a home planet, a previous profession, and their own ethics. We can follow their journeys and witness their unique destinies unfold. From the screenshot we have here, it looks somewhat similar to the concept behind leader levels in Hearts of Iron and how that system progresses, though the implementation and UI are quite different of course. What we see in this shot is President Dolores Mwanga and she has leveled up. Upon doing so, we can pick a new trait for her, either Deep Connections, giving her plus 0.5 influence, this is one we've all seen before, it's a trait we've had in the game already, or below that, Unified Focus. Unified Focus we've not seen, we don't know what that does. In fact, we are getting literally hundreds of new leader traits coming to the game with this expansion. 
it is going to be quite, quite different. Leaders, I think, will be more important now than ever. And with customizability gives us, to be quite honest, a greater way to shape who our leaders become and therefore reduces the RNG of when we roll a new leader. Because as we level up, we'll be able to choose the traits that they get. And if you're enjoying this video, please lead that like button. And then we have a new mechanic that I really like, and that is the council system. A new ruling council is introduced where characters in the highest positions of your empire may take their place. Powerful traits have immense influence over all that lies within your empire's borders, and from here you can unleash political agendas. From what I can tell from this screenshot, we are going to be getting at least three positions on this council, the president or the, the leader of your nation, a head of research, and some form of military leader. And then we'll have two additional positions which are tied in to the civics you choose for your empire. In this case, Beacon of Liberty and Idealistic Foundation give us a Tribune of the Plebs and a Protector of Liberty. We also will be able to launch agendas from here. So agendas will go from being kind of that weird concept where you might have to do a specific thing like build a couple of mining outposts to get some unity. And they're now going to be, I believe, very, very reworked. In fact, we'll be taking a look at another image a little bit later on, which shows us even more depth than this. And yes, agendas have been reworked. I, I can confirm that. After seeing these screenshots and after hearing about the new council feature, the fact that leaders are now going to have ethics and homeworlds and all of that, I couldn't help but think this might be an internal politics DLC that we might be getting a faction rework. I have asked and I have been told emphatically no, this is a leaders DLC, not an internal politics DLC. Whether or not you think that's a shame, whether or not you wanted internal politics, we're not going to be getting a specific faction rework tied into galactic paragons. Out in the depths of space, out in the dark void, you may discover powerful paragons. These may seek to join your empire, depending on your ethics. You may be approached by greedy governors who grovel in the dust, cunning spy masters, prophets who disseminate the knowledge of the Shroud, and so on. But as you explore the galaxy, you may also encounter truly legendary beings that change the core of your empire. One example of these legendary leaders comes from the images we have on the Steam Workshop page. Now let's go through all of that Steam information so we can get just a little bit more knowledge. So the Astro Creator Azarin is a legendary paragon. They've got some unique traits by the look of things down in the trait section. They're green, they look biological in nature. I've honestly got no idea what these mean other than spark of genius. The rest of that there in the scientist category could be basically anything. The upkeep of this legendary paragon is also absolutely massive at a whopping 14 unity for just a single leader. I'm suspicious that the higher a level of a leader, whether that is levels one to 10 or these Paragon levels, because we see other named levels other than legendary as well. In just a moment, we'll take a look at that. But I'm suspicious that the higher the level, the higher our unity upkeep will be for these leaders. But also what on earth is Astro Creation? The description for Stellaris Galactic Paragons on the Steam page is as follows. The Galactic Council is vast and full of personality. Add Galactic Paragons to your empires and experience a new level of character and story as great leaders rise to positions of power and follow your lead into the stars. With exclusive additions to the all new council mechanic, Leaders who you can shape to amplify the vision for your empire, new civics, and much more. Galactic Paragons will shape the future in ways the galaxy has never seen before. The features include new council mechanics, 
assign leaders to vital positions and set agendas to steer your empire as you see fit. In Galactic Paragons, find dozens of unique council roles based on your civics and government types, and unlock additional positions as your empire evolves. Here we have a more in-depth look at the Council of the United Nations of Earth. We can see we have launched agendas on the bottom left, active edicts on the bottom right, there is some sort of give and take mechanic, I'm not entirely sure what that does, I'm thinking maybe we can have some sort of negative modifier in the short term for a bonus later on, and possibly vice versa. It's kind of some form of investment, civilizational investment maybe. We can see on the right though we have some available agendas. These are entirely new. Evolving society, ideas and theories for new ways to improve ourselves must be discussed and pursued, I assume and infinite opportunities. Let's promote and celebrate our technological achievements. These must have some sort of in-game benefit, in-game bonuses that do something to our empire. As yet though, we haven't got any tool tips. We don't know exactly what they are. We can also see which agendas we have launched in the past, open arms and expand the council. So we can use agendas to increase the number of people we have on our council. That must be beneficial in some way. Having more people must give us more bonuses. Also, is it just me? Or does Scrand Sharpbeak seem to be a level 10 fallen empire admiral? Um, it's amazing that the human race have got that, but, but that's cool. Also, there's something else we're ignoring here. Have you noticed there is new artwork? We have new looking aliens. It's the same alien actually, but from a different angle. We've got new clothing, new human looking aliens. I believe it's human actually, the head of research there. Maybe that is not human, but, but it does look like we're going to be getting new leader portraits that are aligned with species that we already have in the game, but in some ways unique and different. We also look like we might be getting new clothing as well. This is very, very exciting. I'm hopeful that this is a change that will affect all of the base game empire races. I'm very hopeful in fact. New dynamic leaders are coming. Recruit, improve and follow the leaders of your empire through the ages. You may shape them by picking their traits, selecting their veteran class and guide them towards their destiny. Up until they retire or perish. Now, leader retirement is a mechanic we have not seen before at all in Stellaris. I'm really interested to see what that may actually be. Possibly it's just flavor here and won't actually have an in-game impact as well though. And here we have the new revamped leader screen. Abassi Dizana here has leveled up and we can choose what her new trait will be on leveling up. It looks like she has access to fleet organizer, engineer, also she could upgrade venerated to level two, possibly though it looks like she can't actually click that yet from the UI element. There's also two more choices as well. We don't, it seems, have the nice UI tree they have in Hearts of Iron where you can see the whole list of different traits. Instead, we're going to have to go through a smaller list like this to pick the exact trait we want from ones currently available to us. The amount of flavor this is adding as well is pretty phenomenal. So we can see here that this admiral is an egalitarian admiral from the continental world of Earth, where he previously held the position of ship's weapon officer. That's a level of detail I don't think we've ever seen in Stellaris yet. Um, wow, the, the, the specifics now on what we can do from a roleplay perspective, I am frothing at the bit for. Also, to circle back to my comments earlier about Unity Upkeep, we can see here there are two level 5 and two level 4 leaders, and also a level 1 lead. The Unity Upkeep of the level 5 leaders is two more than the level 4, and the level 1 leader has a Unity Upkeep of only two. I'm now fairly confident that as our leaders level up, we're going to have to pay more Unity for them, which for robots will be particularly nasty in the very early game where the Unity production is so abysmal. 
Looking through the icons as well, we can also see that you can be on the council while still being an active leader. So being on the council, for instance here, Natsuki Sasaki is the tribune of the plebs and is still governor of Earth. We've also got a whole host, and I really do mean host, of new icons for leader traits. I've got no idea what most of these do, honestly. Even venerated, I'm scratching my head at these. It's going to be really interesting to see the direction Paradox Arctic have gone in with this DLC. Meet Galactic Heroes. Attract paragons of renown to your council. Unique leaders with their own art, events, and stories may join your empire and bring their own benefits to your government. Or discover four legendary paragons with intricate event chains and unique mechanics. And also, from what it looks like, unique artwork. So, so far, I think we know of at least two legendary paragons. First off, we have the Astro Creator Azarin we saw earlier. And then I also suspect the character that voiced over this trailer will be one of the four legendary leaders. That is a character who is found as a baby in a stasis pod after many millennia, knowing nothing of their previous civilization, nothing of their past, and then some stuff's going to happen. We have two examples of new paragons we might find. The first is this Titan-class ship, which turns up from an Eldgate or something else like that. It's very strong, and it is fully crewed. Not only that, there is a commander on board resplendent in full military gear who you can initiate formal relations with. I believe this will end up being formal relations just with the crew of the vessel, though it is implied they may also be tied to some other empire somewhere else in the galaxy. I suspect it's an empire that has since fallen, something like that, an empire we cannot interact with anymore, and this is the last vestige of that civilization. Though, if it's just a way of making contact with another empire in the galaxy, that could be fun as well. And here is Lysator Singh. A renowned paragon, this is, I believe, a level below the legendary paragon. It's nice as well that they're color coded here. We've got specific color coding for kind of legendary, renowned, maybe there's epic, maybe there's just rare, that kind of thing. It does remind me a little bit of some MMORPGs. But here we have Lysator Singh, who you can find out there in the universe. He's basically a criminal, a buccaneer, a pirate. And you can recruit this admiral, who's also a tactician it looks like, into your empire. You can enlist them and then pay them a unity upkeep. Finding unique leaders in this way I think will be a core feature in the new DLC. It's also going to give us the ability to get leaders that are far in excess of a level we could have otherwise reached by the normal methods of leader progression. This means we'll get more powerful leaders faster. I'm interested to see if we have unique ships for this kind of leader as well, or if it is just the four legendary leaders that each come with their unique art and unique ships. So far, the artwork we've seen is actually really, really good. It is much more in-depth, much more procedurally generated than other art we've seen so far. Clearly, the artists have gone above and beyond to breathe life into a lot of new, unique character profiles that we're going to be finding in the game. We are, of course, getting new traditions, civics, and more. A new under one rule origin that tells the tale of the leader who founded your empire. I'm getting some real kind of uh, Pharaoh or maybe Apocalypse vibes from that one, to be honest. Eight new civics focused on leadership, from immortalizing the personalities of leaders past in digital archives to heavily optimized council selection via corporate charter. Basically, these civics, I think, are all going to be about leaders, that, that's what we've said so far, but also we're going to be interacting with them in different ways. Some of them we're going to be, by the looks of things, able to kind of store some leader traits or leader abilities long after they're dead, that's pretty cool, and others are just going to be about kind of improving and optimizing how we can select leaders and put them into the positions that we need. We're also going to be getting 12 new veteran classes. Now, we've had that talked about again and again in this developer diary and on the Steam page, but 
it's not really shown up in any tool tips, I don't know exactly what that means. Hundreds, literally hundreds of new leader traits are coming, two brand new tradition trees giving players new edicts and improved leaders, new ships, new art, and new story content. This is a DLC that is at least as large as First Contact. I'm being told it is a big expansion, however it's not quite of the same scope as Overlord we had in the previous year. So I think this might be the big expansion we get this year, but due to First Contact our big expansion is a little bit smaller than we've had in the last few years. But oh my goodness me, the turnaround time here is so fast. It was under two months ago that the last DLC First Contact was released, and we're already getting a new DLC coming out. It's, it's just mind-boggling actually how, how quick this has all come around, but this is all thanks to Paradox Arctic, a development studio with a heavy focus on Stellaris that have been working in parallel with Paradox Green to develop Stellaris content like this new DLC. It's a shame that this might be the last DLC or the last pieces of content that we get from Paradox Arctic because Paradox have decided to shut down Paradox Arctic. I've talked about that already, I won't be talking about it in today's video other than to say I think it's a shame. This DLC looks really interesting, fantastic from an art perspective as well as giving us a whole host of new mechanics to sink our teeth into. There is one thing I'd like to talk about before we finish, and that is what on earth is this obelisk type thing that is the final image on the Steam page? Nothing describes it, nothing talks about it, it's just this obelisk which does seem to have some sort of goopy material leaking from the top. It's purple, it looks ancient, it looks kind of evil. I really want to know what on earth is going on here. Let me know what you think this is, let me know your thoughts on this latest DLC announcement down in the comments below. Stellaris Galactic Paragons will release alongside the free update coming with patch 3.8. If you'd like to know more about all of the new features coming in patch 3.8, including a rework of ground combat, click the video on screen now.